You are a moral. Are you not? You are a parasite who leeches off Just like you, the culture man. of- I got the shotgun. We got the briefcase. It's on the game though, right? This scene raises an interesting point, that while the legal system may condemn Omar Little for his disruptive role in the drug trade, there are many players and even entire industries that legally feast off it too. Cops, politicians, and of course lawyers, build their careers off the continuation of the drug war. Why should their self-serving role be considered intrinsically more moral than Omar's? For anyone that's watched The Wire, a series filled with crooked cops, well-intentioned yet deceptive detectives, and sympathetic drug dealers, we naturally understand that the legality of one's actions doesn't define them. Their moral code does. Which is why Omar is such a captivating character. So let's examine the morality of Omar Little and see if we can determine whether or not, at his core, he's a good person. The first question that needs to be addressed is what makes a person good? Now everyone will have a slightly different answer, but for the most part, we would say that someone that's honest, doesn't harm others, and tries to enrich the lives of others around them, qualifies as good. Now at first glance at Omar, the answer is no as we have witnessed him steal and commit acts of violence, including attempted murder and sometimes even cold-blooded murder itself. However, all of these immoral acts are committed inside the game, a lawless wild west that's all about taking what you can get and seeing how much you can get away with before ending up behind bars or dead. But what's so intriguing about Omar is his ability to compartmentalize his moral compass. Anyone and anything inside the game all bets are off, it's play or be played. Whereas for anyone outside the game, the tax-paying citizen, Omar is harmless. He obeys all the rules, is courteous in how he speaks, and doesn't even like hearing foul language. Don't nobody want to hear them dirty words, man. We see striking moments of this divide in action. For instance, when Omar robs a drug package from a local convenience store, the store itself is a legal tax-paying entity that obeys the laws of the city, but the act of participating in the drug trade does not. So Omar is fine with punishing the owner for playing and steals the package, but afterwards he wants to buy a box of Newport cigarettes the right way. My chain, yo. And now that he's playing the role of customer, he expects the clerk to fulfill his duty for this legal transaction by giving him his change. This transaction is inside the game, this transaction is outside the game. So whatever the rules are or aren't, Omar will play fair, as that's his code. This is why he's visibly enraged and upset to see that not everyone in the game abides by basic human decency, like when a hit is put out on him on a Sunday morning when he's taking his grandmother to church. Times like that are meant to be off limits. But while this ability to compartmentalize is interesting, it is still just one man choosing to engage in both behaviours. You could even say this makes him more guilty, as he knows the difference between right and wrong, but still chooses to do bad things. At his core, Omar is really an opportunist. If you're selling an illegal product, then you're willfully taking a risk and hoping to make a quick buck. He knows you have no recourse and can't go to the police, so although he is stealing, he's stealing an illegal product from a criminal, and therefore essentially disincentivizing their illegal activity by giving himself all the reward. Think of Omar like a mirror. Whatever game you're trying to play, he'll reverse it so that you end up the victim rather than the perpetrator. Now of course, stealing from bad people does not automatically make one good. Omar is still just serving his own needs. He doesn't destroy the drugs or hand them over to the police, or even share the profits with the community, like Robin Hood. He sells them himself. So he's no better or worse than the corner boys he robs, as he's still damaging his community by contributing to the drug trade. But in Omar's mind, he didn't import the drugs, and he didn't get the people addicted to them. All of that is going to continue with or without him. So why shouldn't he get to benefit from at least disrupting the process, and making the participants think twice? On top of that, if we just look at Omar's activity, as shown over several seasons, we notice that his actual goal is simply to hijack the product in question, not to harm anyone. Time and time again, we see Omar strategize the best way to corner his opposition so that they simply hand over the stash. 
Ideally, they'll toss it out the window or door to avoid any conflict whatsoever, which he considers fair enough and never takes it further. Other times he has to show his intent to be taken seriously, so he'll shoot a soldier to make a point, but usually it's just in their leg, or in the case of Mike Mike, he shot him in his hind parts. While none of this qualifies as ethical behavior, it's more merciful than most would grant him if the roles were reversed. The game is filled with soldiers senselessly killing one another to take revenge or take land, and we even see innocent taxpayers get caught in the crossfire, sometimes by accident and sometimes to send a message for snitching to the police. In a world of cold, immoral actions, Omar's game is noticeably more ethical, and to some degree, fair. But given his presence sparks such fear in the entire community, it's safe to assume that Omar has killed some soldiers in the past. If he never left behind a single body, then people wouldn't immediately flee the scene for safety. This reputation had to come from somewhere. And it's not as if Omar is against the idea of killing entirely. If it's self-defense or an act of revenge for harming someone he loves, he's morally content to kill and seemingly feels nothing about it. Now, of course, this is completely illegal, but morally, this makes Omar more endearing, as we see that he truly cares about those around him, and he's notably never the one to strike first. He's a polite, warm, and affectionate person, and even trustworthy, which is why Jimmy is happy to meet up with Omar with his own children in the back seat, something he would never do with a truly sinister character. But it's Omar's choices that lead to the demise of those he loves, boyfriends, partners, friends. If he truly cared about them all so much, wouldn't he just step away from the game and find something else to focus on? Perhaps he's never considered it a real possibility, having been born and raised with all of this normalized to him. But we see that he's emotionally bothered by the idea that he's negatively influencing the next generation to become just like him. Although he has his reasons for pulling the trigger and doing what he does, in practical reality, all the kids see is bodies on the ground, even though he believes he goes out of his way to be ethical. For example, even when he's engaging in vindictive murder, Omar wants to ensure he's got the right person. This shows us that it's not about anger or making himself feel good, it's about doing what's right and what's fair. He doesn't want anyone to pay someone else's debt for them. If the bullet is meant for you, it's meant for you. If it's not, it's not. So even if he's just not quite sure, Omar will pull back and even call the police and ambulance to give you a chance to survive. He may be cold and clinical, but he's not cruel or devoid of humanity. We see this again when Omar is trying to figure out if Joe is responsible for Butchie's death. He hits Slim Charles over the head and lets him talk, but once it's reasonably explained why Joe is innocent, and thus there's no point in harming Slim, even though he expects to be shot, Omar is merciful and just slips out the back. This is in stark contrast to someone like Marlo or Chris, who show no mercy to their victims whatsoever. Once the decision is made, you can't reason with them, only make it easier or harder. Our decisions define us because they reveal what we value most. Omar values people who value him. He's loyal. Butchie truly helped him many times throughout his life, to the point that even though he was safe and out of the game, hearing about what happened to him motivates Omar to return to Baltimore to set things right. In many ways you could say that this is a selfless act, as the easy thing to do would be to let it go and count yourself lucky. But that's not who Omar Little is, that's not how he operates. He believes in justice and is willing to risk his own life for what he believes in. This is why, while you could technically say that Omar is a deceptive person, as he's a strategic thief who even bends the truth to put Bird behind bars, he's actually one of the most forthcoming, open, and honest characters in the series. He loves who he loves unabashedly. He takes pride in who he is and what he does, no matter the setting. And he stands by his actions, willing to face up to the consequences if and when the time comes. These are all solid characteristics that anyone should admire and emulate. Unfortunately for Omar, he stayed in the game for too long and took on challenges that were beyond his reach. But that's part of his moral code, 
If he's responsible for something, or the death of someone he loves, he can't let it go. He has to keep fighting to make it right. I still feel like I owe some much. But the coldest thing he's done, and you can be the judge of whether or not this changes the complexion of his character, is his shooting of Savino. He accosts him outside a club, and recognises that Savino was once acting as muscle for Avon Barksdale, but is now acting as muscle for hire for Marlow. Savino insists he wasn't there, and had nothing to do with Butchie's death, which Omar is already aware of. But he then asks, so you're innocent, huh? Which is a drastic shift from earlier. When dealing with notorious killer brother Muzon, once he realised he wasn't responsible for his boyfriend's torture, he pulled back and called the police. But this time, Omar, perhaps feeling worn down by his injuries, and frustrated at how many people prop up this violent behaviour, takes no mercy whatsoever. He identifies that even if Savino wasn't there, if he had been there, he'd follow the order just the same. So he shoots him in cold blood. Perhaps so there's one less killer on the street, perhaps just to make himself feel better. But this act shows that Omar is changing his own code to try to defeat Marlowe. When Omar was wrongly arrested for murder, the reason Bunk knows he's innocent is because Omar sticks so rigidly to his code. And although Savino isn't a civilian, and is part of the game, if Omar had been this trigger happy throughout the series, we wouldn't intuitively feel that he's a good person. He would seem bloodthirsty and careless. He could have had a dream ending if he just never returned from Puerto Rico. He bit off more than he could chew, and this emotional decision is what leads to his eventual downfall. But part of what we love about Omar is that he's the type of person who would do just that. He wears his heart on his sleeve. He is who he is, he cares about who he cares about, and he has this overwhelming instinct inside of him to set things right, no matter the odds. But this is what makes Omar Little such a fascinating character study. He makes certain criminal activity feel morally justified. When he's arrested and thrown in jail, in some ways it feels right, and in some ways it feels wrong. Yes, he's a criminal, but only against other criminals. Yes, he's a killer, but only against other killers. If we go through our criteria, is he honest? Yes, there is no lie in Omar. He's completely transparent about who he is and what he does. The only times he lies is to help lock up a known killer as revenge. Does he harm others? Yes, but only those playing the game who would enact the same harm on him if the roles were reversed. Does he enrich the lives of those around him? On balance, no. He contributes to a cycle of drugs and violence that encourages the next generation to emulate his behaviour. And he puts those he loves in harm's way by living the life he chooses to lead. If he truly wanted to keep them safe, he would use his intelligence to get out and stay out so that they wouldn't be put at risk. But by playing the game, to some degree Omar can influence it. He can serve street justice that cops can't, and he can make the criminals think twice about their own decisions. And that makes the real question, not whether Omar Little is as moral as an everyday citizen, but would the game be better or worse without Omar Little in it? Does he make this little corner of the world a little less painful and a little more considerate? Or is he just amoral, as Maury suggests, another low-life criminal who uses his own flexible moral code as justification for his self-serving actions. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more of it, please do consider supporting me on Patreon, as it really does make a difference to how much content I can pump out. Or if you can't afford that, then simply like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to help the algorithm do its thing.